Welcome back to Vital Signs. We are here today with Christopher Turner of Emergicon and we are demystifying emergency services because there's so much that we don't know. And in the break, we were, um, we were chatting about what we had been discussing, which was how do we uncloud and demystify what happens in this nebulous world of emergency medicine and billing. And he gave us two different things that we can do. Number one, advocate for ourselves. If we get a bill saying that our insurance denied the claim, call the insurance company. Sometimes we need to clarify. And the second was, you know, to call the provider because they want to help and they can help with payment plans or, or whatnot and work with you because they understand it's an, it's, it's an unexpected medical expense. But he said that there was a third thing we can do, and I'm going to go ahead and dive right into that. What is that third thing, Christopher? The third thing is to really reach out to your local representative. And it, Texas legislature tries really hard to help, and sometimes they get it right, and sometimes I don't think they have full understanding. So sometimes the legislation really bolsters the ability of insurance to kick the bill more to you and what we try to do is to avoid that so they need to understand and we all need to understand uh, EMS is woefully undercompensated when you consider them rolling a mobile ICU to an individual and they do amazing amazing things there it's reimbursed very low which makes it a very difficult situation to provide care across the state no doubt so your local legislator needs to understand that it's really important to you as a citizen that they get proper reimbursement. Absolutely. You might pay for health insurance with your employer every month. It ought to be a covered service at a sufficient rate that if you need it, you aren't stuck with a massive bill, which is what happens very, very frequently. Okay, so let's talk about that and get real kind of like, let's get a case study going. Something happens. You are unconscious, EMS comes in. What goes wrong in this process that results in the denial and me getting this astronomical bill and not knowing who's billing me what, where? What does that look like? I'll start with what goes right. So what goes right is the delivery of people to your side. That, that never ceases to amaze me, the professionalism of those people. I mean, just, the, I, I can't tell you how much respect I heroes. have to them. Abs absolutely, and some of the stories as I've been associated over the years, I just, I can't imagine. What goes wrong a lot of times is unconscious, let's say. And let's say you're transported to the hospital. It, it's a puzzle to put back together that, that really needs to be done carefully because at the end of the day, it's still you. Mm -hmm. And you still may have some balance of a bill owed. And what I mean by being careful is, what if you're at work? Is it a work claim? Maybe you're in a work vehicle. Is it a worker's comp claim? Maybe it was another driver that hit you and injured you. All kinds of things happen. Maybe it was truly a medical emergency, unfortunately. That has to be put together carefully. So it has to be put together so, to, so there's a clean claim that goes with a real understanding and explanation of what occurred to get reimbursed. If that process is not done very thoroughly and carefully with a lot of research, and, and submit it in a proper way, it's really easy for that claim to get kicked out. And then the default winds up being the patient all the time, which mm -hmm. we all get that, but that broken process really can put a lot of burden on the patient that they didn't need to, or it can burden them, I'll say, um, unevenly. So for example, if there's a real breakdown in the process and then the bill is not appropriately constructed, maybe your out-of-pocket was 200 well now it's 800 dollars mm, because that's the a big difference it's a big difference <laughs> it's a big difference so a little technical here but it's important i think for people to understand and so when we get that 800 bill it's always first stop is call the insurance company make sure that they have clarity around what they Absolutely. what they did the second step is to call our provider and see what we can do and yep. of course talk to our legislator Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. We've nailed it. We've got action <laughs> steps, folks. Yes, we do. Remember, this is not medical advice. This is something for your education. I hope you're paying attention and documenting this because every one of us will eventually have some sort of an emergency uh, situation, whether it's ourselves, a family member, something that we're witness to Correct. in our lifetime. Um, so talk to me a little bit more about those who are in outlying areas who may be 45 minutes away from the nearest hospital, but it's not even a trauma center. Like, What is different? in the preparation for them okay. 
so that they're prepared in the case of an emergency? Uh, certainly, if, if you have a underlying health concern, you need to understand what's the access to care for you. So, mm -hmm. so if, you, if you're working with a physician and you know you have an underlying cardiology concern, I would want to be closer to a, a facility that has 24-7 cardiology care. That's important. You also need to understand that if there is a traumatic event and you're transported to a local facility that doesn't have the services, you're going to be transported again. Mm -hmm. So that could be on the ground. It could be in the air. Unfortunately, sometimes the air is faster, but due to weather, it has to go by ground, which can be a long and bumpy road. That can be hard for people and hard on people. And, and despite all the professionalism and the delivery care, just geographic distance sometimes makes a big difference. So you see a lot of times um, people of an older age that are gonna live a little closer to an urban environment because it's really important for them to have quick access to care. Similarly, if you have young children, we all know the you know scrapes and bumps and things like that, but children's hospitals are very uniquely able to deal with children's issues. EMS is not that dissimilar if they see a lot of kids. If they don't see a lot of kids, sometimes they're less less adept to dealing mm -hmm. with children. Not, un, not at all uh, unca incapable, but sometimes if you don't have a lot of kids, it's a smaller town, things like that, that can challenge them as well. It's just the differences in, in medical need. Absolutely, and when you see a thing, and you see a thing, and you see a thing, you get an, a level of expertise, and right. when it's more rare, it's a little bit more challenging. You still have the expertise because you were trained in that, Correct. but you just don't have that ex, ex, extra experience, I guess, is, is, Correct. is where, I'm, where you're going. Um, so Chris, like we're about to wrap in a few minutes. Is there anything else with regards to emergency care, billing, demystification, yep. anything else that you really want to share with our audience today? One of the thing, um, thanks, thank you. That is a great, uh, great question. One of the thing that surprises people a lot of times, every time I tell them this, is when you, when you look at uh, population, there's an anticipated response for emergency care, but what people don't generally understand is it breaks down like this. About 50% of the patient population is covered by Medicare or Medicaid. Another 20 or so percent, maybe as high as 30, is covered by uh, commercial insurance, health insurance. The rest is uncompensated. So for an EMS department, you're talking about 30% of the time they're transporting patients who are well below the poverty line, no ability to pay. And, and that is part of what they do and everybody accepts that's part of it but that also removes their ability to get reimbursed in certain areas, which is challenging. It's very mm -hmm. difficult. It's a very expensive delivery model. It's a very effective, but it surprises people to know that frequently people have no ability to cover that EMS bill. And so there's a lot of burden on the system. A lot of burden on the system. Makes a, it makes a lot of sense. I come from healthcare, so I understand that. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much for sharing this thank with our audience. I mean, we have to know. We're here to educate because there's so much that people don't know. And when we, when we have the knowledge, we're able to arm ourselves and advocate for ourselves, which is exactly why we're here. So, Chris, if people would like to reach out to you to learn more about what you're doing or um, if you want to share a little bit about what your business in, indeed does, right. um, what, what, how can they reach you and, and what would you like to share? Uh, so I'm at Emergicon, C. Turner at Emergicon.com is my email. We're on LinkedIn a lot. We are focused just in Texas. Texas is a great, big, wonderful state. We focus in Texas for almost 20 years now, continue to grow and be very, very happy. We hire all local people in Texas. We do not outsource anything overseas. It works really well for us and, and we're very happy to serve the, the population that we do. Fantastic. And if you're looking for that again, it's emergicon.com uh, um, and, and C. Turner, Chris Tur Christopher Turner. Thank you so much for your expertise. Thanks, I Jen. really appreciate everything. Any parting words before we hit commercial? Uh, happy 2024. I hope everybody has a blessed year. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your expertise. Thanks. So we are going to wrap for commercial, but remember, be prepared, advocate for yourself. If you do have an emergency and you get a bill, call your insurance company first, um, and then if, make sure everything's clear, and then call your provider to see if you can work something out. And last but certainly not least, be sure to advocate for yourself and contact your legislators so that you can ensure that the emergency services in your area are properly funded. So if an emergency happens to you, you know that you're going to have the response that you need and be taken care of in the way that you need and not see an unforeseen exorbitant bill. 
So those are the big takeaways. And also if you're in a rural area, know your time uh, zone to get to the nearest trauma center or whatever care you may need and be informed in that way. Preparation is always better than being surprised and no, we can't plan emergencies and yes, they do happen. But the more we can arm ourselves in the, in the advent of or in preparation for, when it does happen, we're ready to take care of it. We will be right back after these messages.